Hey folks, welcome back. Very excited today to share with you the operation of this thing right here, the Woodland Mills lap siding attachment. If you've seen my other video, you've seen me go through the entire process following this manual on how to install the lap siding attachment on my HM130 behind me. Today, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna follow along with the manual and I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to do in order to cut your very first piece of lap siding in order to do it successfully. Thanks for being here folks and let's go. All right, folks, first things first, keep your owner's manual at hand. That's what I'm gonna be going through. If you make your way all the way to the back of your manual on page 44 of 60, I'm gonna be going through the lap siding cut method. You're gonna notice there's one to six steps here along with a really nice colored diagram. I'm gonna be going through this step by step in order to get this lap siding that you're after. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure to take our log and take all four sides off it in order to make a cant. And this is a cant, it's a squared off piece of lumber. What we're gonna do with this is basically make this into our lap siding. Overall, this is seven inches wide by six inches deep or six inches tall. It doesn't necessarily matter what those dimensions are, aside from the fact that whatever you want your finished piece of lap siding to be, you want that to be the width of your cant. This is called a cant. Next, you're gonna make sure your cant is pushed all the way against the log stops. You'll notice I have one down there and I've got one right there. You wanna make sure your cant is pushed all the way against that and it's secured firmly. Now that my cant is fully secured, I'm gonna to go to my owner's manual under step number one. Step number one states I need to angle the saw head by setting the indexing handle to whatever notch I'm wanting. What I'm ultimately trying to do is to set the indexing handle to a notch of my choice and then align the blade once it's tilted to the top right corner of the cant. This here, shown in the colored diagram, is the cant lumber. So I'm gonna do that now. On my indexing handle, I have seven notches which I can choose from. Each notch will give me a different tilt on the blade. It's up to you to choose what particular notch you wanna use based on the tilt and ultimately the profile of the piece of lap siding you're making. I'm gonna choose a notch somewhere in the middle of my seven notches, and in order to do so, I'll simply lift up on the handle and I'll pull back towards me. Now I've positioned my indexing handle on the fourth notch from the black handle here. This will give me a nice tilt and ultimately a nice profile for my lap siding. After you've set the notch on the indexing handle, you're gonna check to make sure that the blade is in perfect alignment with the top right corner of your cant. Notice how my blade is slightly higher. If we push this forward, see how it's slightly higher than the top right corner? So what I'm gonna do is go back to the height adjustment and I'm gonna lower that blade and then recheck. In my case, it's very, very close. I'll go down just a little bit more, maybe an eighth of an inch, and then we'll be in perfect alignment with the top right corner. Now that the blade is in perfect alignment with the top right corner of my lumber cant, we can go ahead and lower the blade to the desired thickness of my first piece of lap siding. In this case, if we were to make a cut right now, notice how thin that piece of lap siding would be? That's not ideal. So I'm gonna lower this approximately one half of an inch. Now that I've lowered the blade approximately half of an inch, and that dimension is going to be up to you, you may decide to try different dimensions in order to get the optimal thickness of your lap siding. But now you can start to see what the profile is gonna be of my first piece of lap siding. At this point, if this is not what you're looking for, you'll want to adjust the indexing handle to the appropriate notch, and or you may want to adjust the height that your blade is set at in order to create a thicker piece of lap siding or a narrower piece of lap siding. Once you're content with the profile of the lap siding, take note of the notch that the indexing handle is set to. Mine is set on notch number one, two, three, and four. It's important because I want to make sure it's always in that position for each subsequent cut for the lap siding I'm making. Same thing goes for the thickness of lap siding I'm making. In this case, I said I lowered my blade by a half inch from that top right corner of the cant. Make sure you do that every single time for each subsequent piece. To summarize, the very first thing I did was select the notch for my indexing handle. I selected notch number four. Next, I adjusted the height of the blade shown here in black so that it aligned with the top right corner of my lumber cant. Once it was aligned perfectly, I then selected a half an inch, and this can be adjusted for your thickness requirements, but I selected a half an inch and lowered my blade in order to give me the profile of my very first piece of lap siding. Notice the dotted line here shown under number three. 
This dotted line will be my very first cut. Once that piece of lumber is cut, I ultimately will adjust the height down another half an inch. But this time, I will adjust the indexing handle back to the very first notch so that I get a horizontal cut. As you progress through your lumber cant, it's important to note that you're going to be going back and forth from a tilted cut to a horizontal or a flat cut. Tilted cut, horizontal, flat cut. You'll be going back and forth in order to achieve your pieces of lap siding. What stays consistent is the distance that you drop down the blade each time. The first drop down was a half of an inch. For you, it might be something different. Whatever you choose, it'll be the same for the next lowering or drop down of the blade. Same thing for the next one. Same thing for the next one. That'll maintain consistency and pieces of lap siding that are exactly the same. Once you've completed your first cut, you can flip over your very first piece of lap siding. In my case, if you have a look at the very end, you can see what the profile ends up being. One end is going to be narrower than the other end, and that's what lap siding is. If you're not happy with your lap siding, what you can do is you can adjust the notch on your indexing handle and or adjust the height to adjust the thickness of your material. For me, that half inch thickness appeared to be great. It's going to give me the perfect profile, so now I'll continue on with the steps in my owner's manual. Now the next step in my owner's manual states that I need to return my sawmill back down to the very first notch so that we end up with a perfectly horizontal flat cut. Once I do that, then I'm going to adjust the height down another half an inch. Half an inch is the height I chose at the very start for the very first piece of my lap siding. Now with my indexing handle set back to the very first notch, as well as my height set a half inch lower than previous, what I can do is go ahead and make my next cut. And as you can see, that's going to give me my second piece of lap siding. piece will be now a perfect match to your very first piece. Now we'll go ahead and repeat the process. Now to maintain consistency and make sure that that lumber can is made into perfectly similar pieces of lap siding, we're going to adjust the indexing handle back to notch number four, which we started with. And then we're going to adjust the height using the height adjustment, back down another half an inch. That'll give me the perfect replica piece of lap siding for each subsequent piece I cut. One last tip, make sure you're going back to your owner's manual as you're learning how to use your lap siding attachment. You have to make sure to remember to alternate between a tilted cut and a horizontal cut, a tilted cut and a horizontal cut. By following these steps, Referring back to the diagram in your owner's manual, you're sure to have success in getting equal sized pieces of lap siding from your lumber cant.
Now, once you guys have had a chance to cut some lap siding, be sure to take a break. You may decide that one particular profile or thickness on the lap siding is your preferred thickness. What I did here is I laid out four pieces of lap siding and I adjusted the thickness of the material to give me a different profile. I did this in order to maximize the number of pieces of lap siding I get out of each cant and to get the profile I'm looking for. In my case, I went thin here, so I went narrower. Here I went wider. For you, you may decide to have this, you may decide to have this. For me, I'm deciding to have this here in the middle. This will be the profile that I like, therefore I'll remember what the particular notch is on my indexing handle and I'll also take note of the height adjustment I made each time. In my case, it was half an inch. No matter which adjustments you make to your lap siding attachment, you're going to be making some beautiful lap siding. This is a great addition to the Woodland Mills, my HM130, and I'm sure it'll be a great addition for you. Get out there, make some cans, make some sawdust, and ultimately make some lap siding, because this just adds to the things you can do with your Woodland Mill sawmill, and I'm sure you guys will enjoy it. Guys, thanks for watching. If you have any questions at all, be sure to put it down in the comments below. As always, you guys take care. Be well. And I hope to see you.